Hi friends, welcome back to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. We are still here gardening in St. Paul, Minnesota at my son and daughter-in-law's home. And now it's time to start putting plants into the ground that used to live in the plant stash. We bought some of these plants the other day at the garden center that you may have seen in that other video a couple of videos ago. And the rest of these she's had for a couple of different shopping trips, right? Yeah, uh, same, same store, but at a different location, also on sale. All right, so let's get some of these plants in the ground. Come on with us. Okay, so right now we have placed out the perennials where Beth wants them in her garden. Some of them are going on the street side of the berm. Some of them are going to go on the lawn side of the berm. And some of them are going to go in the brand new flower bed up by the lilac tree. And anywhere else? Yeah, I think that's it. that's it. And then there are still some plants in the stash for <laughs> containers, for her fall containers, and then also some for the backyard, which we haven't shown you. And I don't know if we're going to or not. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. You'll find out. All right. So um, let's go take a look at what we have and where we're going to put them. Yeah. We picked up two uh, pixie metal bright echinacea. Uh, this is a powwow berry echinacea that I bought this year and did the bad thing and only bought one but <laughs> I like doing this where you mix varieties so these two will become a little cluster here and these new ground cover sedums will move as needed that'll be a really nice color combo there with the two different colors of pink yeah. but the same form of flower yeah That's love really that nice. um then we have a uh, calament here yep. which is very pretty and sounds like a great ever bloomer yep I recommended that to Beth and she said okay sure yep. So in it goes. This is Calamint, um, Calamintha nepeta, cross nepeta, I believe is what it is. The species Calamint, um, hybridized with nepeta. Yeah. And uh, so it's a white flower. It flowers for months and months and months, midsummer on through to the fall. Love it. And it'll grow into a mound about two feet wide, um, foot and a half to two feet tall, and you'll be able to divide it up. I had one that I divided into five pieces one wow. time. So. Well, I love it's like it kind of glows. It's a very pretty yeah color. yeah and it's gonna look really nice in front of these green plants the yeah. bluish green which are these are um, double play uh, blue kazoo spirea oh nice okay so and then behind that is where we've put um, surprise the plant that we bought because we didn't know we because it was lovely it, yes <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have a home for sale, it and I love this pink and white bloom and I believe it's a double bloomer. It's a clematis. Yes. It is early flowers, open ruby red at the center of the flower, fading to a brilliant fuchsia, and then an orchid color at the edge of each petal. Very nice. Great repeat bloomer, pruning type two. Oh, so you don't ever have to prune it really, if I understand correctly. Group twos, you just let them go and they'll bloom in the spring on old wood and in the fall on new wood. And what's the variety name? Oh, uh, Killian Donahue. All right, Killian Donahue. So we're um, it's going to go back there behind the spirea, kind of centered between the two windows. And then, oh darn, we'll have to go shopping for a trellis oh, to no. put it on. Another what a pity! Trip. What a pity! <laughs> um, then over this way, we have the repeat immortality white tall bearded iris. That's full to part sun. I love irises. I think they're so handsome. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I have any um, repeat rebloomers. So anytime you can find a plant that repeats, I think it's pretty cool. Yep. And I guess this says hummingbirds. Have you ever seen hummingbirds? I have not. But the, your... Yeah, but I don't really have a lot of experience with hummingbirds. We just had them the first time this year. And they weren't at our garden yet when the flowers of the irises were blooming. Yeah, I've seen a few at my back window looking for food and I've had nothing for them. <laughs> okay, so, and I think the rest of them are in the other, yeah. on the berm. All right, this is sedum peach pearls and I don't usually like orange but these leaves are so beautiful. Uh, it looks a little sad now because it's been in the stash for about a week and a half. And um, 
I just couldn't say no. It was so different and really beautiful. And I really do like sedums. So Jenny made a really good point. Putting it the dark color against this bright pasta would do good. Um, both... Yeah, we don't want it to disappear into the dirt behind it. Yeah, and then um, the more front side of the garden gets more sun, so that'll be good. And we can easily move this hosta to the backyard where I'm creating a hosta garden. Perfect. And these are the shrubs that we just planted in the most recent video. This is the spirea and over here, uh, honeysuckle bush. Uh, sorry, bush honeysuckle, butterfly variety. And I think that one was called Superstar the Spirea. Yeah. So we had the three bush honeysuckles here that we just planted. And so what, do, what else are we putting in here? Yeah, we have Millennium Allium, which everybody knows and loves and is great. And we found some with a whole bunch of stalks. So it can grow together in a nice cluster here. And then this is another one I had in the stash, Nepeta Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Such a fun name. And that is our grandson's favorite treat right now. That's true. Kit Kat bars. Kit Kats. So we'll probably split this, put half here. And because Nepetas are so strong and resilient, the other half will go onto the big part sun hill that really needs to be a tough plant to make it. Yep. So I think this will make it. Perfect. And then last we have two sedums. Um, this one here, this sedum over here is an Autumn Joy that actually Jenny gifted to me, making its life up there. Then I have this sedum powder puff that was just chop full of dense blooms and I thought it looked really cool. So that will pop here to play kind of with that sedum. And then I've bought over this year, this sedum started off more bicolored. Uh, I can't I can't remember what variety this was, but it was um, yellow and green. It might have been Atlantis, um, but it's kind of faded. It's tricolor, not sure why, or it's bicolor, um, but that is there. I'm told, some of my viewers tell me that if you have a variegated plant that reverts back to green, it might need more sun. Oh, well, it might need more sun here, so limbing. Your soil is so sandy, I can't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also full of vole holes. Oh. That's the squishiness. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. And then there's a blue spruce sedum that's uh -huh. trying here. And this, I don't know the variety, but my mom gave me this. It's from like Angelina, garden. but I'm not sure. That's doing really well. And so I thought, hey, let's pop another ground cover sedum and maybe the whole edge of the garden will become uh, creeper seed on. Cool. And so, and which one is this? This one is called Sun Sparkler Zyme Zinger. Lime Zinger. What a name. Yep. But really Beautiful. cool. All right. So we have, as you can see, um, quite a few perennials to just go around and pop them into the ground where we've placed them, where Beth has put them where she wants them. And we might do a little weeding here and there, but actually oh, yeah. things are looking pretty good. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, just general garden maintenance, but a fun day in the garden on a beautiful fall day. Uh, so let's get after it. So Beth's soil is pretty sandy and right up here against the street is also salty um, because in the winter when they get snow and ice, the salt trucks come through with sand and salt. And so this bed especially has sandy, sandy, sandy soil and a lot of salt in the winter. So we're going to be adding some compost to the planting holes and also using Biotone starter fertilizer, which I have in this little container for ease of moving about the garden. So let's get planting.
We did a good job, I would say. Yeah. Don't you think? Totally. We got all those perennials put in, and except for the clematis. Yeah. Clematis. Clem clematis. 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 Doesn't matter. Um, it's going to go up against the house, and we need a new trellis for it. So we'll wait. Well, she'll wait. I won't be here most likely, but maybe. Who knows? Oh. Maybe this week. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed watching me garden in a different spot and watching Beth and oh hello little baby such a sweet pie and i hope that you will continue to watch harmony hills home and garden and come back and watch some more videos very soon thanks so much see you later bye bye can you wait bye 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 bye